Hello everyone. So in the previous sessions, uh, we started our journey uh, with pandas and there we are at multi-level indexing and we have touched and seen all the concepts, most concepts in multi-indexing. Uh, so what was that multi-level indexing? So basically if you want multi-level of indexing, so we uh, demonstrated different aspects of multi-level indexing. This was a table and the core concept was that if you want different levels of indexing, so index could be columns or rows. So if it is columns, let's suppose you can have level zero index and then level one index and similarly uh, in the in the rows you can also have like this so you can have level zero and level one and then you can have data in the table this will be data okay and this will be level zero this is level one and similarly this will be level zero and level one but this will be in rows and this will be in the columns so that's what we saw so multiple indexing or hierarchical index so that allows you to work with more complex data sets so we gave an example of i think students uh, if many people uh, you might remember how we how we did that and similar example can be shown for different things Let's suppose you have different stores and you want to analyze data if you are uh, having let's suppose two stores uh, uh, Maybe electronic store and clothing store and you have uh, In total four stores, so I'll just give an example so I have to refresh the memories. So suppose you have in total four stores So you're running a uh, chain of business and among these four stores, there are two types of stores. So you have electronic stores where you sell electronic goods and then you have clothing brands where you sell clothes. Okay, and now the placement is you have uh, East and West. So maybe let's suppose some area is called uh, East and some area is called West. Now in East, you have one electronic store and one clothing store. So in West, you also have one electronic store and one clothing store. Now what you are doing is you basically want to see uh, the sales in January, February, March, something like this. Okay, we'll create data set just to uh, show you that and we'll, we'll just uh, uh, basically see a real world example where we can use this multi-level indexing. Okay, let's go to the code window. I hope it is visible. So I'll just copy paste this so that it becomes easy for me also. So now I'll just import pandas first that you can see over here. I imported pandas as PD then create this is sales data. So you have electronic store. Uh, one in east and one in west you have clothing store one in east and one in west and these are the sales for january feb and march okay now what i'll do is i'll create an index so index basically will tell me it will be for the for the columns uh, basically uh, column january column feb and column march now if i want to uh, create this data so you know how to create this data so i can create this data like this so this is <coughs> my data frame and this is my index Okay, now what if I want to multiply if, if I just print it, let's suppose I want to first print this what I have done so far Okay, let's just like deep learning kernel So here if you see now you can see you have East and you have West and you have electronic store and you have clothing store now you see that indexing over here This is this is for the uh, This indexing over here if you see is for the uh, named and is for these uh, uh, Rather than these uh, having just one column you have for each column you have the indexing This is the this is the type of indexing I was showing you prior to this So this is the upper indexing so indexing for the rows and we have East and then we have West We have electronic store we have clothing store and this is January Feb March so what if we want to uh, maybe uh, just print like let's suppose we want to uh, have region and categories also so I, I can just call them uh, this is uh, my region and this is my category so what I can do this so I can just add these columns so if I do like this so data frame this is my sales data okay I should it did not copy so I'll copy it Print it here so you can see that now column names what I'm doing is I'm saying DF take these columns and name them as regions and categories so now if I print this DF okay you can see that now this is the region so basically this is the region okay east and west the region and this is the categories okay these are the categories I just added this multiple indexing so this is my level 0 index so this region east west and these categories uh, the categories that I have electronic store, I have clothing store, and this is January, February, and March sales. And you know, you can do all the different things on this. Okay, this is how you can create, you can use this multi index, okay, multi index from tuples. Okay, and similar can be done for other examples. We have seen in detail the example of uh, I think students and their marks and their subjects, marks in the subjects and with the semesters also. So, now uh, one of the important concepts that I would like to just chip in here that concept is called as cow. Okay. We have talked about this in our Python uh, somewhere, so but not in detail. So I, here we'll see it with a bit of detail. So what is cow? So you'll see a lot of animals in 
python you python itself is an animal uh, so cow basically is called as copy on write this is called a copy on write this is this is a very important concept so when uh, this uh, pandas was introduced or even this concept is generic it doesn't only apply to pandas or python so this is a generic concept so when this uh, uh, was introduced in version 1.5 uh, 1.5.0 that's what is mentioned in the documentation so uh, this was introduced in this and from that from even version uh, onwards 2.0 onwards some optimization was done through this cow and i'll tell you what this cow means basically so uh, so copy on write refers to uh, an optimization technique aimed at improving memory efficiency so it improves the memory efficiency improves memory efficiency so how does it do this so now if you see by default so in pandas many operations they create copies okay whenever you do something you do slicing let's say you do modifying you do some other thing so it will make copy so that's quite inefficient that's in memory wise that's quite inefficient so especially when handling the large data set let's suppose you have a data set which is of a uh, few hundred gbs or maybe uh, tens of gbs so it is a relatively large data set whenever you do a certain operation so it will create copy so it will create copy and you will perform let's say hundreds of operations if you perform hundred if you uh, you have gbs of data and you performed hundreds of operations so this much the data will be unnecessarily wasted so it is better to create views because we have seen what was the difference between view and a copy so now what cow does cow elevates uh, this, this basically what it does is it uh, solves this problem by avoiding unnecessary copies of the data frame so the copy will only be made uh, when the data is modified so that is the core concept of cow so when data is modified then only make the copy okay so what it does is because usually if you are doing uh, let's suppose some modification something you are doing slicing uh, you are doing uh, maybe some other uh, operations on this if it does not modify data okay so it is better to keep just the view not the copy okay so if you are modifying the data then make the copy that's why it's called copy on write basically co make a copy when you are writing something right basically when you are changing when you are modifying something okay so <coughs> Let's see a basic example. For if you create a data frame, I'll go to the coding window and I'll create a simple data frame. I hope screen is visible. So I'll create a data frame. So uh, pandas is imported. So what I'll do is I'll say uh, df is equal to pd dot data frame, and then I'll create the data frame. And in this, I'll create this a, and then I'll have values in this one comma two comma three. Then I create B. Oops. B and here it should be colon. And then I'll create one more. Call let's suppose the values are four comma five comma six. So these are my values that we have. So now if you see this, so this should be comma. Otherwise it'll give an error. So this is my data frame which I created. If I want to see this, so this is the data frame. Now, if I want to uh, print the copy directly, so what I'll do is, uh, so I'll have let's have a DF copy and I'll just assign it to DF. So assigning DF to DF copy, this does not create a new copy. So what I'll do is I'll just say DF hyphen if I write copy like this. So if I just assign it like this, because I'm just assigning the values. So this does not create the copy. If in order to check this, what you can do is you can uh, say print uh, DF is DF copy. Basically, are they equal? Okay. So if they are uh, Let's suppose if you can see the output is here it was true because they are the same things. If they are the same, it's true. So in this case, DF is just a reference. DF this is this DF copy is just referencing this DF. That's why you can print it like this. If it was something different, so it should give the false. That means they are not equal. They are they are somewhat different. Okay. So if you modify these values now, okay. If you modify this uh, something, let's suppose I'll modify. I'll have because you saw till now this is not a copy. This is uh, just a view. This is because reference the similar. Now if I modify this DF copy. So this df copy, if I modify, how can I modify it? I can say dot loc dot location at add zeroth location uh, and column a change the value. Basically, at this location and this location, I'll assign value some hundred. Okay, let's say some hundred I'll assign. Okay, so if I assign this value over here, so now if I print this df dot df copy. Okay, now you saw the value got changed. Now if I print this line again, if I say df of this this should give me false because now it will actually create a copy it's again showing the true maybe there is some issue with this 
so it should not be actually the copy why is it print true i don't know uh, maybe if i print let's say print and print df only df i want to print okay yes so it changed it okay basically whatever change i made it here so basically it, it should be true over here so whatever because this was just a reference okay as expected so this df dot copy so i gave it df so when i checked it it's the same thing so when i change something in df so as it was just referring it it was just referring it so if i printed df dot copy same thing is in df so df also got changed okay we have seen this concept previously okay but i was uh, thinking that this this actually should now make a copy okay df uh, if i should change it i think there should be some issue with the my pandas thing but i hope it should create a copy okay this copy on right should create a copy maybe it there is some issue with the uh, my pandas but take home concept is that whenever you modify something so whenever you modify so it should create a copy okay maybe i have some issues with the the uh, with the pandas version but when you are doing it i just do it with the right version of pandas so that you uh, get the copy of this okay so uh, if you just change something so you should basically it should it should give copies so simple uh, simply said so you should be uh, first checking the version of this so as you saw uh, in my case it was not actually creating copies so what it should it should do is when you modify a certain thing that's why what the cow concept says that is copy on write when you write something it should create a copy so if my pandas version was right and which allowed copy so i was telling you that a previous behavior is that it uh, will uh, uh, not basically create uh, these copies so maybe it is showing some uh, uh, that behavior so here what i am saying is so it will when you write something so it should create a copy okay so i was supposing that when i wrote the things it should actually create a copy but it is not creating a copy so as i was telling you that it can be some version issue so now after checking the documentation so they have done this they have said pd dot options dot mode copy on write is true you have to keep this you have to write this line okay and then what will it do it will do copy on write so let me just delete it now so if you just set this line okay so copy on write what is what is the meaning of that copy of write means so you are copying initially so okay let me again show it so you have a copy so this is uh, your data frame if this is the data frame and then you make a copy of it you see that df copy is equal to df and then you are saying print df is copy are they equal so here it is showing true that means it did not create a copy it just created reference so here what i did is i on purpose changed the df copy that means i wrote something i manipulated it but the thing that i was missing initially because of the version thing so i should have kept this line i should have said pd options dot mode is copy so here if you see still it is true now now if i change it if i change it okay now if i print df copy that is this well if i print df okay so you can see and df and df dot copy so if i now print it let's say i'll print it somewhere print df is df copy is df copy it is still showing true <laughs> this is this is weird error so have i have a line printed this line okay so let us take their example so this is the df i'll create so this is the df so this is my new df which i am creating from the documentation so this is that and now i am uh, giving a subset of this so just assigning it okay assigning the subset so subset is a value which is basically df of this okay so if you see now this so if i print subset over here so subset subset is 1 uh, 2 3 because there's there's this taking this value this is uh, as a 1 2 and 3 that's foo and now what i'll do is if i now have to change it so still if you see this 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 thing is the same now what i do is if i just write something on to it if i say subset dot i log dot 100 so now this should create a copy okay so if i see this so if initially it was similar so uh, if uh, if i just did it this app change should appear here also then okay if i now change it so you can see subset dot i log 100 so if i now change see subset what is the value of subset so subset got changed but df should be the same Uh, if it is a copy if it is a reference then okay so df you can see that df is the same thing the okay, same thing i expected over here but this is the example they have given so now initially what you saw is you create data frame okay till here when you do subset so here this was just referring to this okay so when you created subset but when you modified the subset okay you modified it over here so that means copy on right okay now it will create a copy of subset 
Uh, till the point it is basically just differing it it is just uh, by differ i mean defer defer it is just pushing it pushing it don't create a copy don't create a copy once it is modified then it is left with no choice to create a copy that you can see over here okay maybe we can also print id of df and this so id of df this is where df is stores and then we can create id of subset but anyway it should be different there also but id doesn't give us much information Okay, and they are different in values. So, but because it created copy on write, so is it clear what is copy on write? <coughs> so, copy on write is a mechanism of efficiently handling data. So, what it will do is it will basically differ uh, the uh, differ the making copy till the point when you write the copy. So, it will otherwise use a similar reference. So, once it saw that you made some change in the thing it was a previous layer referring to, it it will make a copy as we did it over here. So, we had the DF initially. So, DF was this. So we created two things, foo and bar, and we get the values one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we create a subset of this. Okay, this subset actually was initially uh, just referring to this one, two, three because it is just slicing. But once you modify it, you modify this by using i of zero is equal to hundred, and then you again print the subset. Now you print the df, you will see the value of df was not changed. Okay, that means subset is a different thing. But when was this copy created? This copy only got created once you modify the values. That's what is, uh, why it's called as copy on write. Okay. And we have seen in detail what uh, a deep copy is, what a shallow copy is, uh, what a view is, and what a copy actually is. So we have seen that in detail in Python. But I just wanted to give you one or more concept that's copy on write, and this is used in many other many of the ways. Okay, this is a concept, and maybe right now you saw that there were problems when I was running it, but finally I could make it work. But uh, uh, co uh, this cow is a concept. Okay, it may apply not just to pandas, maybe to other libraries, maybe to other languages also. So copy and write simply means. Uh, you copy, uh, you just keep a view, okay, or maybe a shallow copy till the point you don't modify the thing. Once you modify the thing, you make a copy out of it. Any questions on this copy? Any questions on this cow? So after introduction of the cow, now we'll move on to the next topic of how to basically join, concatenate these data frames, okay, because everything that we have uh, in here, the fundamental data structures are data frame and series. Now the topic is uh, concatenating and merging. There are different ways in which you can concat and merge. Okay, why is this required first? Okay, why is this required? I'll tell you different scenarios. I'll give the real world scenarios while you will use them, and then we'll see in pandas how do you how do we do it? Because you should see it like this. You should see every problem as this. Every problem exists in real world, and pandas or maybe other libraries they just create solutions for it. It's not that key. we just create pandas first and then try to find okay where can I apply this. So these problems were actually in the real world, and then we said okay in order to uh, uh, do this functionality, in order to do uh, this particular thing, I want this functionality, and now. Uh, we'll do it like this and then there's the implementation details which uh, are hidden from the end user so uh, why is it needed let's suppose you are training a, uh, you are uh, running hospitals okay maybe let's suppose there is hospital a hospital b and hospital c and now you know the assumption is that the more data you give to these deep learning machine learning models the better they will train okay and if if there is a variety of symbols if you get a variety of data then the assumption is that the machine learning models will perform good now you have this data hospital okay Let's say you have the data in which you are training a machine learning model on some hospital data. But let's say hospital A has some uh, data, hospital B has some data, hospital C has some data. Now what you want to do is you want to combine them. You first want to collect this data. Okay, you want to collect this data and you want to combine them together and then train a machine learning model. Okay, so for this you need to have a way in which you can merge, concatenate, join these data sets so as to train a better machine learning model. So in here there all, um, uh, again arises one more problem. So there is a problem of privacy. That's why I wanted to take this uh, the opportunity over here to explain you this. So right now, many of you people are scrapping data. So at least uh, two of uh, you uh, groups are doing a project. One are doing on some notes and making another uh, and this doing on sentiment analysis. So in that, the first thing that you have to do is you have to get this data from somewhere. Okay, then you will probably let's suppose if you create data frame and you will have a lot of different files, and now you'll have to combine these files together in order you know in one data frame. There it is required. But what's the privacy concern I was talking about is, <coughs> let's say, you have these three hospitals, A, B, and C. Now, each of the hospital has, has the data. And they do not want to share it with each other. Okay, but still they want to train the machine learning model. Now, because let's suppose here we have ML model, and that we want to train, and we want to get data from all of these. But they, they do not want this data to be, let's suppose, to give a central authority who will take data from A, data from B, and data from C. 
and then train a machine learning model because they uh, fear that there will be a privacy breach people will get to know more about patients. Let's suppose if this data is given to insurance companies, an insurance company can just analyze the patients, analyze the individuals, and they can charge them more premiums because based on the health conditions they have, insurance company will think that this uh, patient, yeah, this uh, customer is uh, uh, probably having a high chance of uh, getting some disease. So it is better to charge more premium for the insurance if this uh, is some sort of thing. And that, that, is, that is the privacy breach over there. Okay, now what people have thought is they, ha there are, they came up with different techniques. Okay, just little digression I am taking. So that's called as multi-party computation. Okay, what is the multi-party computation? So in this multi-party computation, we have A, party A, party B and party C. So they have a common goal. The common goal is to train a machine learning model. But now the choice is each of the parties should just get the result and they should not know data from each other. Okay, and this should be somehow mathematically proved that, that they are not... Uh, able to see the data from each other and there are these techniques and this uh, thing is uh, uh, now heavily taken into account and there are di different startups which work on this privacy issue of the data okay so the first thing is we had uh, the problem i just want to take this digression the problem was that if you have data which is scattered around and you just want to combine merge them in a certain way and that is the functionality we want and that's where panda comes in uh, with the whole uh, concept of these concatenating merging joining and then merge order and there are different functionalities that you say that you that you have in pandas and this is one real world scenario which you will have and uh, many of the many of you people are doing it right now and i just introduced you one more problem so there is a problem and i'll just maybe uh, uh, give more details do you want me to give more details on mpc how many of you want some more details i can maybe give some more details if people want <coughs> okay 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 let's let's go in uh, a bit of detail maybe it's a little bit digression from pandas so in, in MPC, let's suppose you have three parties. You have party A, party B, party C. They are mutually distrusting. So the meaning of this is uh, that party A does not trust B and C. And B does not trust A and C. And C does not trust A and B. So this is called as a mutually distrusting parties. But they don't have trust over each other. I'll take a simple example. Let's say this A has number 10. And this A, B has number 20. And this C has number 30. Okay, so what they want is let's say they want addition of these numbers because addition is a function. They want to give f of 10, 20, 30, and they basically want an answer of 60. Okay, so this is a f addition function. This, so th this function basically adds these three numbers. But what these parties are, uh, they are uh, interested in just getting the output and they don't want to share the data with each other. So that's called as multi party computation. You have to perform a computation, and the final result 60 should be known to everyone. So 60 should be known to this A to B and to C, but they should not be able to tell this 20 and 30, A should not be able to guess that B has number 20 and C has number 30. And similarly, B and C should not guess the numbers of other two. Okay, the first simple thing that comes to the mind, can we outsource this? If we have A, B and C, and we have numbers 10, 20 and 30. If we have a central server, okay, and central server is there, if we just send these numbers 10, 20 and 30 to the central server and central server will perform the computation and what it'll, it'll do is it'll just send back the results to all the parties but here you don't even if you don't trust the central server also let's say okay if you don't trust the central server so what will happen is so now uh, you will have to find a technique somehow which basically allows you to just mi minimize this if there was a party which you can trust and then you could have done it this way but now i'm saying that you cannot trust the party in itself okay i'll give you probably some two three minutes to think so can you think of how can we do how can we do this so the idea that you people gave is we can uh, anonymize these pis but i said that anonymization is a different technique in itself okay and mpc in itself is a different technique so here we are trying to see mpc so i'll tell you the uh, answer so what the thing you can do is, <coughs> let's suppose this A, B, C are now three parties, A, B, C, and they don't have a central server whom they can trust. Okay, they just want to communicate between each other. To get, and this A has 10, number 10, they have 20 and 30. The interested function they are uh, up to and they want to see basically is F of 10, 20, 30. They actually want 60 as an answer and they should not get each other's data. So the simple technique is that this A will send uh, just let's suppose add a random number let's say that random number is 5 and this this a will send this number to b now a actually sent 15 15 is not the real number okay this is just uh, some as as anwar said will mask something so we mask that number 
okay so we share a share the 15 with b now b after adding this number so he'll share 35 okay because 15 plus 20 is 35 it will share it to c now c has no way of knowing what is the number of a and what is the number of b because uh, he doesn't he or she doesn't know number of a number of b he does just know 35 so now what he'll do is now c will again uh, perform this addition so c will do 35 uh, plus 30 so it will do let's suppose uh, that is 65 so this 65 will be sent to back back to a now a knows what is the random thing that i've added uh, a just knows that a knows that i have added number 5 so a will do 65 minus 5 that is 60 now after that a will broadcast it a will broadcast everywhere a will broadcast it to this and to this and now each of this knows number 60 60 and 60 but no way they know that what was the number with a and what is the number with c this is the simplest thing i can say in multi-party computation they performed a computation multiple parties came together and performed a computation together okay now they only know the result of the computation and they do not know what the, what is the, what is the number that was held by other parties okay this is called as multi-party computation so similarly in machine learning we have the same problem now consider this a as hospital b as the hospital c as the hospital they collaboratively want to train a machine learning model so they can use advanced techniques uh, mpc where they what's this is called as secret sharing so when they share this data this is called as secret sharing ss secret sharing of data so when they do it so they secretly share data and that means it cannot be reconstructed back okay and that should be mathematical grounding so here yeah, this you can clearly see that they have no way of knowing the number but it, if it was just two parties they always will know the number because from the sum you can just reconstruct let's suppose i'll give an example if it was a and b only a had number 10 and b had number 20. if let's suppose a sent number 15. okay if a sent number 15 and now this guy will send back number uh, 35. Okay, now number uh, uh, this will be uh, subtract 35, so this will send, this will broadcast 30. So this guy will broadcast 30, number 30 now. Now B has chance of knowing. Why? Because he knows the result and he knows there's only A involved and he knows his number. So he'll say 30 minus 20, that's 10. 10 is the number with A. Okay, two uh, pa in two parties, you have to find some other way of multi-party computation. Okay, and now, but if you see in three parties, this, this is called as additive, additive scheme. So you just add some noise. Okay, you saw that this additive thing failed in two parties and you will have to come up with these different things so the first part is you will have to come up with it, what is called a secret sharing scheme okay, ss okay you have this ss and you have to create secrets and you, you have to create secrets of the message okay ss it is, this will be a function which will let's suppose create m1 m2 and m3 if it's three party and it will send these secret shares to uh, different parties so i hope that you at least got some glance of what mpc does so in MPC, we try to uh, model a problem such that if different parties uh, which are mutually distressing want to collaboratively train a machine learning model or want to collaboratively just do a computation, it's not just for tra machine learning training because training a machine learning is performing a computation. Okay, in general, if you want to perform computation where you have mistrusting parties, you do some sort of secret sharing and then you perform computation and you have the communication also, communications between uh, these parties and finally you just know the result of the computation and you don't know do not know what others party possess you just have the prior knowledge whatever previously you had you have that knowledge and you just know the result of the computation that is the goal of multi-party computation okay i just a digression so here <coughs> i was telling you that these problems when they occur in real world and when people are making libraries so what will they do is they'll say okay this is the problem in the real world now we have data that can be collected let's say mpc problem doesn't exist uh, for now and we can collect data from different resources <coughs> we have different sources where we can collect the data from now you want to combine the data together okay and you want to combine that in certain way so pandas has given the whole uh, with different methods how to uh, perform this uh, concatenation how to perform merging joining so we'll see that now okay the first thing that we'll see is concatenate so this concat is a function Okay, and uh, there are different ways you can use it in. So uh, we'll go through the documentation and we'll see uh, how to do it one by one. Okay, let's uh, see the VS code first. And we'll create some data frames. The best way to teach is from the documentation because if they have some error, uh, then we can raise the error on the GitHub and asking them that this is the error that we have faced or you have implemented some functionality wrongly, which is rarely the case. And you can just raise the issues. <coughs> now we'll see how to combine and merge the data sets going back to the code and now you can see the code screen 
Yeah. The first thing is let's uh, again create. I'll just import these two things: import pandas and import numpy. So after that, I'll create a data frame, and data frame will be created. So you can see this is the data frame. Okay, this with a a has some values, b has some values, c has some values. This is a zero, a one, a two, a three, b zero, b one, b two, and b three. Let's suppose this is the data frame first. And similarly, I can create second data frame. I'll create multiple data frames. Consider that this is hospital data. Okay, or maybe some other parties which want to uh, collaborate. And now they have they are trusting parties and they have a central server. We don't have a problem of multi-party computation. Just get that out of the head. But these problems do exist in real world. People don't want to share data with each other. That's why I just took the digression. So you have this DF1. So this is my data frame. So you have A, B, C, D features, and you have let's suppose four sample points. Now let's create data frame two. This is DF2 in which I have A, B, C, D. So I have A4, A5, A6. This is this is my DF2. Okay, in which I have A4, uh, A5, A6. And this is these are the features, and these are the data points. Now I'll again create DF3. So from point eight, oops. So we have this. This is my data frame three. If I print it, you can see this is A B C D. This is eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now what I can do is I want to <coughs> basically uh, concatenate them together. I want to just put this make a data whole list. Basically, I can, the concatenation should be like this. So I have four features: A B C D, A B C D. The features are similar. Now I want to put these data together. I think we have seen that in pre uh, this functionality has been seen uh, previously briefly. Now we'll see it in detail. Now what we can do is we'll create frames first. Okay, so frames will be created, and in frames we'll put all of these together. So DF1, DF2, and DF3. Now we created this frames. Okay, because frames is a list now. So now from this list, what we can do is you can say result is equal to, so PD. Dot and then you can say concat, and then you can say frames. So what are the data we have in frames now? We have DF1, DF2, and DF3. This is actually a list of these data frames, and now put these frames together. Now if I print this result, okay, this is what is expected that you got on the screen. Okay, so we had a table like this. So we had table like this, and it had A, B, C, and D, and then we had certain data points. Again, the similar thing, A. B, C, and D features were similar. A, B, C, and D, and consider that this was with different parties. And now this has to be combined, okay? And this should be made like this. This is A, B, C, and D, okay? And index, if you see, the index is kept the similar to zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how we create the index also. So if you see how we create the index over here. That you can clearly see that we create index also, so as to present this is eighth number point, ninth number point, tenth number point, eleventh number point, and in the real world you have to re-index the data also. But this is the first method. This concat is the first method by which you will concatenate the data together. If you have data from multiple files also, you can just read them in data frames and put them in frames and concatenate them like this. Okay, so this is one way. Let's create and again one more data frame. So we'll create this DF4, and I'll show you more functionalities of this. So I'll create DF4. So DF4 basically is something like this. So it has B, D, F features. So if you see initially we had features A, B, C, and D were the features. Okay. So if I just print that DF1, so because DF1 these are all the same features. This is DF1. So now what if you want to do? You want to concatenate. Okay. But that concatenation should happen. Okay. In such a way so that I, I'll just show you first. X is one should be, and I, I should add these features also. This B should be added, D should be added, F should be added. Okay. But for other other points there won't be. Let's suppose I have this. I'll show you. Example directly so that let's say you have the data like this. I'm going back to the tab window so that it becomes easy to show. I'll just turn this code off. So you had DF1 like this. Okay, DF had A, B, C, and D, and then you had DF2, some other uh, data frame. So in that we had B, D, and F. Now you know that this B is common in both the things. Okay, and D and F is something extra. So what I basically want is I want to add these values. Okay, I want to add these values. So for let's suppose uh, you want to add these features again. You want to add this feature. So how to add this uh, now? And uh, and you have to keep the values in in a certain way. So I'll I'll show you. There is a function again, same thing, concat. But you want to see now how to concat them together. You want to add them like this. So A, B, C, and D, and you want to put it like this. You want to put the values like this. So this is B, D, and F. Initially, what we are doing is. We're just concatenating by default. It was going like this. It was making the whole thing like this. But the assumption there was that features are similar. Now the features are different. Let's say, okay. And now you want to add features. 
okay in this case you have more features maybe data is similar but somebody had more features at this so what you can do is you can use concatenate but the axis should be one now okay now let's do that so we'll say a result now we'll say result oops so result is equal to so what i can do is pd dot concat again but now we have this data so frame one yes oops, on results. Oops. thank you thank you for telling me i hope you can see this now so this is my data frame one which i printed on the screen this is my data frame four so what i want to do i want to put them together so i'm saying but but the putting it together should be back to back it should not be along the axis zero because you know vertical thing is axis zero and horizontal thing is axis one i want to do it now in axis one so i said now result is equal pd dot concat so what i want to concatenate together df1 and df4 and df1 comma df4 this is what i want to put together now the thing is i want to put them in axis one axis is equal one okay now if i want to print the result you will see certain nn values Okay, and you should be able to justify it to yourself. Why is it that any n values? So you can see this now. So you have these values. So let's suppose this is BDF and this is ABCD. Okay, now the values if you can see is A, B, C, D, B, D, and F. Okay, now you see for first. So you got the whole table. Okay, then you got any n values. Okay, but two, three was here also. So if you see two and three were here also. Okay, and two and three were here also. If you see the index, two and three were here also. So they got the values. The NAN values are not there. Okay, if I dissect this, so you can see this. So in both the tables, in this uh, DF1 and DF4, the two com the th common values were, if you see this and this. So two and three was the two was in DF1 also, and two two three was also in DF1. That's why you don't get NAN values. So rest this six and seven points were only see this six point and seven point. This was only uh, in the table two. That's why you got the values for them uh, over here. You can see this, these values, and for for the other table, it got an n, okay. And these values, values zero and one, values zero and values one, they were only uh, in table one. That's why you in table two you got an n values, okay. This is why what I meant by putting them side by side, and then it'll check for the intersection also. It'll see what are the intersection. I'll give the values, and for the other thing, I'll put just n n numbers because it is like a problem where you have data points and uh, you are collecting data. Okay, maybe uh, your friend and you are collecting data. I think this will be a real scenario that you are doing right now, some of you. So your friend A and friend B is collecting data. So you collected some features A, B, C, and some other person he collected features B, D, F, something like this. Okay. So now for certain points, let's suppose for points two and three, you did the same thing. You collected po for points two and three A, B, C, and your friend also collected for points two and three B, D, F. That's why it is both in the both the tables. Now if you see it is in the both tables. So you will when you concatenate them along the axis one. So you will not get any n values because for the same points, he also collected B D F and you also collected A B C. But for the other points, let's suppose you have some other points which were disjoint. Disjoint basically means where you had these points, the other person doesn't have the points. So you will get any n values when you concatenate together. And be sure about these n n values because you have to deal them separately. Okay. So in axis one, I hope that you got the idea of how axis one works. So now what you can do is you can perform what is called inner join. Okay, you uh, you shortly will see what these joins are. And maybe people who know SQL they know what these joins are. So there is something called as inner join also. So what you can do is now if you perform inner, so you have this axis one. So now there is one more argument. One more argument is join. So join basically if you just want to see intersection points, you are saying that I don't want these NN values. I just want uh, to concatenate in such a way so that I only get these additional features for the points which are in both the tables, which are in both these data frames. Okay, so I can just mention this join is equal inner. Okay, so if I do this, if I just add comma, I'll say one more argument is join. So you can see that join and I have to write inner join. So if I write inner, so what it basically means it will take intersection. So if I just run it, you can see that it just took the intersection. It took two and three and it, it get the values. Okay, and this is one of the in, this is in the inner join how inner join works. So inner join basically takes the intersection. So what are data points you had? What are data points your friend had? Or what are data point one frame has? And what are the other frame had? So you take the intersection of these and then you do the join of this. Okay, so now you can also reindex it. Okay, so to for, to form th that's called as left join. So left join basically means so so if you see this inner join, so I'll just explain maybe some of these joins so that once we do it, will be 
comfortable with this. So inner join basically means you take the intersection. Inner join may basically mean intersection. Then you have left join. Okay, left join means take everything that's in the left table. Whatever is in the left table, take those and take the intersection. Okay, you will have two tables. I'll make a diagram maybe. So I'll just close this code and I'll make a diagram. So if I make, if I tell you briefly about these joins. So we'll see these joins in detail. So, but here I'll just make one diagram. So which I'll take from the official documentation. There are a lot of types of join. I just want to uh, show you the fifth that I'll use for today's lecture. And we'll see them in detail. So inner join basically if you have, let's suppose data frame one and data frame two. Okay, because you have these data frames. So this is my inner join. Inner join, basically the intersection. So as, the, as you saw, you had the intersection, you only took them. So you will take this part. Now you have something called as full outer join. So full outer join means you take everything. Okay. So you take whole of this. Okay, wherever this n n value that we did, we also took the full outer join also. So we took full uh, whatever the join was there. And then we have left outer join. So what is left outer join basically means? So if you have this, uh, you have this. You just take these values and you take these values and for uh, these values you will fill n n. So this is called as left join. Okay, this is called a left outer join. Then you have right outer join. So that will be like this. So you'll take right table and its intersection. So you saw this, you saw this, and we'll now see this, how to, how to perform this. Going back to the code window, you can see this. So intersection you saw, you saw this also, when we were performing the full join. So if you just delete this, so you did this. You see you got the whole table from the right hand side, from the outside, and you just filled an AN. So when I, but when I did this, when I said join is equal, join is equal inner, so it will just basically take intersection. So that's what it, it did. So it will take the intersection. Now what you want is if you just want the left join, if you just want to take the whole left table and whatever the intersection is. So what you can do is you have to re-index it. So you will write, let's suppose, uh, I'll say result. I'll keep on writing the result. So pd.concat, this is the function, pd.concat. And then what are you concatenating? You're concatenating df1. This is the left uh, data frame, and then df2 is the right data frame. If you swap the order, uh, results will be different. So then comma axis is equal. So what's the axis one? So now you're not writing join. So what you'll do is you'll say reindex dot reindex. Okay, reindex is the function that we saw. And reindex based on df1 and give the index of that. Okay, give the index of what df1 has. Okay, basically it'll compute the whole outer join first and it'll filter based on the re-indexing, it'll filter based on only df1 and take that. So if you just run it now, oops, there is some error. What is the error? Can data frame index from one to two where given where three. So this is df dot index. Okay, so I, I just put a comma, so I should actually put dot. So now if you see the result, so now you can see this. So it said, a, B, C, and D, and for all the other values, it gave, uh, I said DF2 by mistake, it should have been DF4, I think, DF4, because DF4, they have some values in common. Okay, now you can see that. You can see this value, so you had A, and you had B, you wanted to do left join, left out the join. So you want to take whole of the A, you took whole of the A. Okay, that's why you took whole of this A. A, B, C, D, you have all the values from the A. You also want to take this value, intersection value, okay, from the B also, because B has intersection values. So you took these intersection values. So if you see this part and this part is intersection values, and for other things, you got an A N values. Okay, that this is my left outer join. Outer join. Why left? Because whatever was on the left hand side, I only took that and the intersection part in that. Okay, and rest were any N values. I hope this is clear. Now you can see that how to perform uh, uh, maybe right uh, outer join also. So just let's give it a try. We'll see df dot df uh, whatever four is it df four dot index. Okay, now you can see this. So this is our this over here is our right outer join. So what is the meaning of that? So you got a, b, c, d, but you only got values for points two and three because they were in the intersection. Again, how to make outer join? I'm making terrible diagram, but that's all right. Okay, so here if you see, I took all the values from right table, so that you can see it. So I took all the set values. theory B minus A. Yes, yes, yes. This, this is this is somewhere like like set theory, uh, because that that's why it's called a relational database. So relation because it takes uh, the concept from relations. Okay, 
and uh, but the, the change over here is that you also give these n values you have to give these not number values okay Th that's why it's called a relational databases okay why because we take concept from relation this actually this is a relation this is a relation and then you take cartesian product cartesian product basically is outer product okay and then when you take subset of cartesian product okay that is the relation okay this again is a relation that's why sql you have the structured query language it is based on relational algebra okay and that is basically your set theory set theory is relational algebra whatever you do there so this is the uh, and the type of join right outer join where you took all the columns of this uh, second basically right, right hand a uh, table or right hand data frame and then you only took the intersection parts of the left hand table and rest you filled with any n numbers okay is it clear So if you now see is you can have one more functionality that you can ignore the indices okay and you can ignore the index and it will give the by default index so if you saw whatever index that uh, you see over here so I'll go to the code back oops just did something wrong give me a second or so So if you see this initially, so if you see it kept the index, you see three, four, six, seven, it kept the index that we had. So it had two, three over here, it had six, seven over there. So when you even did uh, this re-indexing, if you just uh, remove this even re-indexing, so when you just print it, you can see that it kept zero, one, two, three, six, seven. So it kept the index of whatever was uh, previously. Now what you want to do is you sometimes want to ignore indices, okay? Let's suppose for these data frame objects, we do not have meaningful index. You just want to ignore indexes and you want just want to give your own meaningful indexes. So for that, you want to concatenate them. You have one more argument in concat that's called ignore index, okay? So this will also be very helpful. So result is equal pd.concat. And then what are we concatenating? Your content data frame one, data frame four. So df one comma df four, and along which axis? Df four along which axis? You are doing it al along the axis one. Let's say. Let's not put axis. We'll directly go to the argument uh, because you have seen that. We'll just ignore index. Ignore, comma ignore index. Ignore index. That means true. Ignore, ignore index takes the boolean value. Okay. So this VS code has these issues. It pops up these things and then it doesn't let you type. So true, and then what you can see is you don't want to sort them. You can also sort, you can say sort is equal false. Sort again is also a value which takes uh, a Boolean value, sort false. And if now I print result, so now I should be able to index it. Now it will be along x is zero and index will be whatever I gave indexes. Index is zero, one, two, three. I did not give by default, it'll take zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So initially when you did it, so it was uh, taking the values let's suppose 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, something like this. Now I gave explicit values. Okay, and this was along axis 1, and this by default is along axis 0. Uh, this is co this is uh, one way because sometimes uh, if these are not meaningful, if the indices are not meaningful, you want to give by default or you want to re-index them. So some, uh, sometimes you should know that this in, uh, if you put this ignore index as true, then it should just ignore this index and it will give them the default indices. Okay, and then the thing is, again, you can also concatenate series and data frame together. If you have a series and data frame, you can also do that. So how to do that? Let's say you have this series S1. So I'll create a series S1. Oops, I'm just pasting this. So I'll create a series. I've just copied it. This is my series. Because I'm just copying and pasting it because I know that uh, you people are now experts at how to create series. So if I just see this S1, you know what it will look like. So it will look like this. So this X is the name of this uh, name. And then you have these values and you have these 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 indices. And now, you know, we have data frame like let's suppose df1. So we'll just concatenate them together along axis 1. This is just adding one more column. If series is a feature, you'll just add one more column. So if I just do result, this is the x column got introduced now and x0, x1 values. Okay. Then you can have unnamed series. So this was named series and you have a name x for this. So if you have unnamed series, by unnamed, I'll just create a series and which will be totally unnamed or there will be no name given to it. Okay, this is unnamed. So if I don't give this name, comma, usually I put name over here and then I give some name. If I don't give a name and if I want to concatenate them together. Okay, so if I, if I just print this S2 first, so this S2 will look like something like this. This is my S2. So now what I want to do is I uh, now want to put this like this. I want to add three times. Say I want to add it three times. So I did df1, 
S2, DF1 will be the first data frame like this, S1, one more column, S2, one more column, S2, one more column. So, okay, so I'm adding uh, three to S2 three times. Now it is not named. So what will be given by default from 0, 1, 2? It will be given 0, 1, 2. So if I just add result, so you can see this. So you took the whole data frame, DF1, okay, and then you took this S2, this is S2, and again S2, you took again S2, again S2, so you have 0, 1, 2 uh, by default because they are unnamed columns. Okay, again, a similar, let's suppose, if you want to, again, ignore indices, that you can do. Okay, is it clear? Is it clear? Now we'll move to the next topic of resulting keys, if this is clear. This is how you can use container, but just keep in view that there are these different things. You have uh, ignore indexes, and you have this, uh, if you want to sort, you have along which axis do you want to add them, and you have the different types of join. Do you want to perform outer join, inner join, full outer join, what sort of joins do you want to perform, and use all the arguments. Do not remember them again. The point is you should know that these things do exist. And if it, if you want uh, to merge it in a certain way, you just are just one Google search away. You just search, okay, I want to concatenate it like this. And now you have a brief idea about that also. So it will be comfortable for you people. Okay, now you have this, we saw concatenation. Now what, what you can do is if you have multiple frames, but you still want to somehow mark them. Let's suppose, uh, I'll just show you one example. Let's suppose you have one frame of data, you have second frame of data, and you have third frame of data. And they have indexes. Let's suppose you have an index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, 8, something like this. You are indexing it and you are making index like this. Okay, this is my data frame 1, data frame 2, data frame 3. Now, the natural question is can I somehow still mark this? I'll concatenate data. But the question arises can I still get the data of only data frame 1? So now, again, we can use multi level indexing. Somehow, I should give a level 0 index to this, this, and this separately. Okay, one index can be common but I can give multi-level indexing. And this concat function also gives us that functionality where you can create multi-level indexing. Now you know that we have three in the frames. If I show you the code, we have these frames. So frames has, uh, it's a list of uh, data frames, three data frames, DF1, DF2, and DF3. Okay, showing you that. So if I, sh if I print frames, so frames, if you know, you have this DF1, this is my DF1, this is DF2, and this is DF3. So now what I want to do is if I concatenate them together. So let's suppose this result, which I did earlier is equal to PD dot concat. Okay. And I am now concatenating frames together. So you know what is the result? So you can just print the results. So you know that it will be around the axis zero. That means along the vertical axis. So this is how I did it. But now here you cannot separate it out. So, I, but still I want somehow the access that this belongs to data frame one, this belongs to hospital two, hospital one, hospital three. So what I can do is I can create multi-level indexing. How to do that? There is one more argument that's keys. I can say keys is equal to, let's suppose first table was table X and maybe table A, we have seen that table A, B and C, table B and table C, okay, and table C. So now what will it do is, it will create a multi-level index. So it will create A, B and C, A for the DF frame 1, B for the DF frame 2, C for the DF frame 3, that is DF3. And then it will show us the index and now multi-level indexing will apply here. So you can see this. Still you got the value, you got this A, again okay, till this, this is our DF1. And now from this to here, this is our DF2. From this to this, this is our DF3. Okay, now how to remember how to see that? Because we added the keys. Okay, once you concatenate them together, what you did is, you added these keys and you said we can do it in multi-level. Now you know that this is my level zero, this is level zero and this is my level one, okay? level one index and level zero index. Now you can do uh, whatever we uh, did in the multi-level indexing, you can also do that over here if you want to perform in that. If this is student, let's suppose data frame one can be student one, this can be student two, this can be student three. Okay, everything detail about student. Now you want to just uh, concatenate them in such a way so that you create multi-frame data. Okay, is this clear? Okay, now you can, I'll just show you one, if you want, uh, let's suppose data of B. So you can just say uh, DF, this is the result of, so whatever result you want, result of dot loc, so, and you will say of B, you got the result of B, okay, because this is multi-level indexing. So whatever you did, you, you can do that. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay, I hope that this is clear. So again, one more thing, these, the keys argument, they can override the column names also. If you want to override the column names, when creating a new data frame, you can do that. Let's say, uh, you want, you have these series, I'll, I'll create four, uh, S3, S4 and S5. And you have this S3, S4 and F5. If you 
combine them together. So this is the first has the name F O O. Then we have zero and one because these are unnamed. These two are unnamed, and I just concatenate them together. Now what you want to do is you want to concatenate them in such a way so that I'll just override the values. So th these keys will basically override the values. Okay, so let me show you that I'll concatenate them in a certain way so that I'll override values basically by keys. So I'm saying key create keys. Keys are red and blue and yellow. But here now this is axis one. This is no more axis zero. Okay, now axis one is there. So what will happen is so initial of this F O O zero and one. These keys will override the names that you saw over here. This is red, blue, and yellow. So if you see initially what we did is we did not give the axis. So axis zero is not given. So it considers by default axis zero. Okay, and here when we give explicitly this, so it gave name this red, blue, and yellow. Okay, it gave it with these columns. Is it clear? So if let's suppose we give axis zero, I want to see what will happen. So you can see this. This is the red table. This is blue, and this is yellow. But here we gave it one, and we wanted it then to override the column names. So it did override the column. Same will ha happen for data frames also. The same thing can be done. What we can do is uh, you can just create a dictionary out of these. So you can pass a dictionary to the concat values. Okay, and and it it will give the value. Let's suppose you again want to create without the keys. Uh, you have this, uh, let's say, data frame one, data frame two, and you want to give them values, names x, y, and z. So what you can create, create a dictionary. So I'll say pieces. So this is my dictionary that I'll create. So this x is I'll put a colon here. So x is df1, y is df2, and df3. Then if I just give this, if I say a result is equal to pd dot concat. Okay, and I'll give this pieces. Now this piece is a dictionary. Okay, what it will do is it will create a multi-level index for for x, y, and z. It will create level zero index, and for the, uh, this, uh, then df one, df two, it will combine them together uh, along this axis, along the axis zero, and uh, it will give me the value in multi-index. So if you, I can show you the result, so this you can see it over here. So this is my df one, and df two, and df three, but here I gave it as a dictionary. So when you pass a dictionary to this. a uh, concat function what it does is it will give the values but it will give a multi level hierarchical indexing so you will have multi level indexing now okay and now you can also uh, put these values let's suppose you want to only certain keys you only want let's suppose y and z so what you can do is pieces comma keys now so you can add keys is equal and uh, you just want let's suppose uh, z and y let's say you want to based on z and y so you'll give these two uh, keys so you'll give z and you'll give y Now, if you see, I just got two df, df1 and df2 because I just restricted these keys. I said z and y concatenate them together. Okay, is it clear? Okay, I hope this is clear also. Now, what I can do is I can also name these things. So, let's suppose I want to name this. This is the group keys. So, I just will put these levels. So, I'll just copy this over here. So, if I paste it over here, so you can see what I did is p dot concat pieces are these and the keys and I have levels. Okay, Z Y X W, and I'll put the group name. So if I just print the result, you will see this. So I concatenate all of these together. But here, these are the group keys. Now this thing is the group key X, Y, and Z. So I named it. Okay, and for different levels, so here I said X, Y, and Z. So this is my X, this is my Y, and this is my Z. So based on these levels, so I have given these names Z Y X Y, and I have given this name as group Y. Is there anything? And you can append rows to the data frame by, uh, let's suppose you have a series. And you want to append it as a row. You saw it. How to append it as a column? Let's suppose you have this is the series. Okay. If I if I show you the series, so I'll print S two. S two is the series. So if I show you this A B C D, and this is this. So you know that D F one. If I just print D F one, D F one is this. If I want to append values at the end, just add one more data point, not just the feature. Initially, I did it by the feature when I did axis one. So what I can do is I can again do the same thing. Result period or concat. Okay, then DF1, then S2 dot two frame. I transposed it. Okay, I flipped it. So initially it was like what's the transpose? If it was a column, it it was made as a row. Then I said ignore the index and give it the normal index. And now if I print this result, this is how you can just add one more data point. Okay, you added this x0, x1, x2 to this DF frame one. So what you did is this is the additional thing that you did. You had S2, you converted the frame, and then said transpose it. When you add transposed it. And then you added it over here, and you said ignore index. Do not take care of what index is there. Ignore it. Is it clear? Is it clear for everyone? So this is these are most of the things that were mentioned in the documentation about concatenation. What are the things that you can do in the concatenation? 
I don't uh, find anything more useful in the documentation. So this is everything about the concat function, what you can do by using the concatenation. Is it clear? Now you saw concat. Now there is another which is called as merge. Okay, so there is merge. So merge is the end thing. After concat, you have this method. You have this merge. Okay, merge basically performs join operations. It actually performs join operations. But join now, if you see, join is performed on a certain key. Okay. I'll tell you what that means. I'll just refresh if people know SQL. So you have a table. Okay, you have this table, basically a data frame, and you have another table. Okay. Now there is a concept of what is called as primary key. And there's a concept called as foreign key. I don't know spelling, <laughs> whatever it is. Okay. So what is the primary key? So primary key is a set of keys or maybe set of these uh, columns. Uh, it can be only one set also. So what it does is, so it will uniquely identify a row. Uniquely. Uniquely identify a row. This is called as primary key. It can be a set of columns also. Let me give a physical example so that you understand it better. There are people from CS who already know it. Just bear with me for a couple of seconds. Let's suppose you have this table of, let's say, employees. Okay, a typical example which people take. So in this, we have employee ID. Okay, we have employee's name. We have employee, whatever project he's working on. And let's say uh, some other features we have. So if you see this ID is unique, this will be unique. Okay, so if you just give me ID, I can uniquely identify one of the employees in their whole employee table. So this ID can be used as a primary key. Sometimes ID plus this name, if ID is not enough, but these two things together, they form the uh, unique uh, identifier by which I can uniquely identify a column, I'm sorry, a, a row, maybe a data point. This will be called as a primary key. Okay, and then we have a foreign key. Foreign key basically, if you have some other table. So here also I have an employee ID. Let's suppose this is uh, this table contains the information about uh, projects. So it has projects A, projects B, projects C, something like this. Okay, and employee is working on different, and it contains just kind of ID. So if this ID refers to this employee ID, so this ID will be called as foreign key because this is from some other table. Okay, and this project contains information about the projects. So this ID is called as a foreign key. So there are these two important concepts. One is called as primary key, and then we have these foreign keys. So primary key basically means we, where you can identify a row, by which you can identify a, a row uniquely, and foreign key means it is a key from other table which refers to some other table. So this is my foreign key of the table. So this is my foreign key. So now on the basis of this, now you have to, you saw, we can concat, we can do this. Now what if you want to concat based on the key? Okay, what if you want to join together based on these keys or something like that? So that's why where these merge methods come. Okay, merge performs join operations similar to SQL. Okay, if you know SQL, good. If you don't know, I just gave you the introduction how SQL does it. Okay, so there are different types of these joins. One is called as one-to-one -one join. Then we have many-to-one join. We have many-to-many -many join. Okay, there are different types of joins also. So we'll uh, start with. We'll start uh, one by one. Let's see. We'll take a left table, a right table. Now we'll name them as left, left, and right. Okay. Let's go to the code window. Go to the code. And now what I can do is I'll just take uh, I'll uh, make a data frame which I call as left. Okay, I'll make that. Okay. There is some issue, but I should be able to fix it. Give me some time. Oops. That's why having multiple screens, it sucks sometimes. So now we'll create two data frames, one for the left and one for the right. So let's suppose I'll create this left first. So left is a data frame. Oops. So I create a left data frame over here. If you see it, this is my left data frame. Okay, I can print it also. So if you see, I have to import pandas because this is the thing I just opened after I was solving some doubt. So this is import pandas as pd and then also import numpy because numpy will be used somewhere import numpy as np okay so now if you see this this is left so this is one table so i have keys also there so key i'll consider this is a primary key so k0 k1 k2 k3 and this a is the feature and b is under feature so this key is uniquely identified now i'll also create a right table so if i create this right table so i'll have these keys also there and then some other features call them c and d so I'll have this, 
this is my right table so we have keys k0 k1 k2 k3 now i have c c is c0 c1 the values that we have now what i'll do is i'll use the merge okay i'll use this result is equal merge which i'll type so result i'll say pd merge merge the left and right table and on what on the key so i'll say result is equal pd dot merge okay and then what what to merge oops what to merge merge this left and right left okay is equal left actually so right is equal right so these are two things which i'll merge so if i once i merge them and then i'll I tell merge on the key so on basically means see the key and then merge based on that key on key okay Be because there is a variable key over here so if you see this so we have this key okay now this key should be kept in quotes so now if i print this result okay so right right so i'll have to run this this right you can see now so now i merged it based on the key so this key was k0 k1 and k2 and k3 so now if you see how is it different let's suppose this uh, if i print uh, if i print this left now if i print this left you can see it on the screen by the way you can it's there's no no requirement of printing it so i'll just show it on the screen so consider them as two tables so this was the key so this was the key over here so key was k0 k1 k2 and k3 okay that means this is let's suppose one employee other employee other employee another employee so these are the employees so they are uniquely identified now i want to merge i want to merge them together based on this key i said okay whatever the features are there this c and d they are the features of this k0 okay based on this k0 so i merge them in such a way it is not that let's suppose which we did uh, earlier we were just doing it without Uh, taking into consideration compare it with something so now i compared it specifically i said this was my first table table was like this and it has keys and other table also had keys i said compare these keys first okay take this key and this key and then add the values okay what are the columns there are so um, on behalf of those uh, let's suppose we have k0 here and k0 also got mapped here so take this and take this now put them together so now concatenate them merge them together based on a specific key okay i hope that you got the concept the people who are who don't know sql but we'll take sql in detail so here we'll just have a glimpse of these things but i hope that uh, after this we'll take some lectures on sql also so we had data frame on left data frame on right so we wanted to merge them based on a specific key so that's what we did over here so we just said left and right and then based on the key let's suppose we can have multiple keys now also okay we can have key 1 key 2 also as i said that primary key can be a set of keys okay so it can be set of features rather not self keys so we have a primary key that can be set of features so for that we also can uh, use this on and now we'll have to say how do you want it do you want it left join right join join house of because joins we have seen it okay let's create another table okay let's create another left table we'll create create two keys over there okay so let's say we'll create a left table like this this is my left table okay key 1 and key 2 now together once i combine them together they make a primary key or something like that so this is my key one okay now i have right so right again will have the same two keys okay so this is my right so i should write right and now if i if i want to merge them together okay now i'll say which join i want i can want left join uh, uh, but i can want uh, right join also i can want whatever join i want so there is one more argument so i can write print merge left and right and how i want to join them i want to join them as left and then key 1 and key 2 okay so key 1 and key 2 is these are the, these are the keys on based on which so the, this whole thing will be my uh, let's suppose a primary key or something like that now if i print the result so now you can see this is the left join okay i took all the values from this left this is the left a0 a1 a2 and a3 so here if you see this this is a, based on this a0 and uh, this a1 a2 a and b column rather so this is a and b whole a and b features and then this we took c and d but only oops so but only uh, the one thing is that based on the left thing now based on the left thing you take it you will first check the key one and you check the key two so i check them key one and key two and if they are in there then uh, take the value because you know the match key are k1 k0 k1 k0 that you can see k1 k0 k1 k0 is here also here so this is k1 k0 this is here okay so based on this you put the values so if you see these are the values which i got okay for other uh, other values you got this nan value and you got k0 k0 also so k0 k0 is here and k0 so whatever the intersection is there put the values and for the right table give all the values in nan okay so if i just print it so that it is 
So I'll print it like this. I'll print result. I'll print all of these th three things. Print left and then print right. So we have everything on the screen. Then I can show how it merged. I think you have the, uh, because I told you what the left join is. It, this should be pretty clear now. Result. Okay. Now you have the, this is my key one and key two. This is my key one, key two. This is key one and key two for this. Now what I'll do is it will not just compare it based on one keys. It will take both of these keys together. It will say this K0 and K0. So you can see here K0 and K0 match over here also. So for this it will add a key over here K0, K0 and all the values from this table. This is A0, B0 and here C0, D0. A0, B0, C0, D, it put all the values over here. Okay, now it will move on to the next set of keys because now I have said this, uh, there are two keys now. This is K0 and K1. Okay, and it will add this K0, K1, it will add A1, B1 correspond to this because this is on left because we are just taking left, uh, left uh, join. And after that, once it goes over here, it does not find K0, K1. Okay, there is no K0, it will put any N values. Okay, so now it will go again. It will go K1, K0. So K1, K0, if you see over here, so there are two of these K1, K0s. So K1, K0 over here. So what it'll do is, so K1 and K0, it'll put first A2, B2, and then C1, D2. This is the C1, D2. Okay, this part. And then again, because it saw it two times, it'll again put K1, K0, A1, A2 will get repeated because that's only once here, because now it'll put C1, C2, because it saw two things over here. So C2, D2, C2, D2, this is what it'll do. Okay, then it'll move on to the next key. The next key is K1, K0. So K1, K0, uh, is it here? Now we saw that K1, K0. So it will now check for K2, K1, let's suppose. K2, K1 is only in the upper table. So you can see that it'll say K2, K1, only upper table's value. And for the other, it'll put N, A, N, N, A, N. So is it clear? So this is how left join work. But now here, you saw that this join worked on based on keys. Okay, based on keys. Okay, the keys were key, key one and key two, and we gave this specifically on. And then we also wrote, uh, is it left join? Do you want right join or something like that? So here we specifically wrote that, if we just go back, we specifically wrote over here that it should be on the keys K1, uh, on the keys key one and key two. And then how, how should you basically merge it? So you should merge it based on the left join. Is it clear? That's why you, I uh, covered that left join, right join first. Similarly, I can do right, okay? Again, if I do this, the right, you can see this. It will give all the entries the right table. So this is the right table. It will first check the right table. So in the right table, if you see K0, K1, is there? Yes. So the whole table got here. So K1, K0. Is K1, K0 there? Yes, it is. So here you got the value. So all the values are printed here. Then it will check the third key. So this is K1, K0. Is K1, K0 there? Yes, it is. So it will put A2, AB, everything there. Last key is K2, K0. K2, K0 is not here. It will put any N value for the first table. For the other table, it will put C3 and T3, okay? Now it is seeing, so based on this left and right, it is seeing how to scan the keys. So if it is on the left, then left table will be scanned and then compared to the right table. If it is right, then we'll scan the right table and compare it to the left table and accordingly fill the values. Any questions here? Any questions? So one more thing that we can do is, we can just print the outer join. So it was left and uh, left join and we had right join. We now have out outer join and we have inner join also. Okay, and then we have cross join also. Okay, this is right, and we see the left, and we can have uh, inner. And I showed you the inner, but here the keys will be taken into consideration. Inner basically means intersection. So you can see we only got the intersection of the keys. So intersection of the keys is K0, K1, K1, K, uh, K0, K1, and K0. That is the intersection in both of these things. Okay, now if you want outer, you can just write outer. Outer is take basically take everything. This is outer join, and then we have cross join also. So all of these details I'll give in SQL with the real world case study. Okay, is there a cross join? Let me check. Oops. Okay, cross is there, but cross does not have work on keys. That is the point. The cross join works without keys because cross is the whole Cartesian product. Okay, so this is the whole Cartesian product. It will take everything. So it, it did this key one cross key two. Okay, and it formed all the keys first. Okay, then you can see four times four, 16 elements should be there. You saw 16 elements. And then it filled these values. So it is A, B, Q1, Q2, and everything to both there. These are 16 values. So this is what is the meaning of cross. Okay, this is whole Cartesian product. Okay. So we saw inner, outer, left, right, 
in a in, in cross the four five types of join and in detail we'll see the real world applications of them when once we go to sql databases but here you know that Py pandas also provide these types of uh, different types of uh, joins within its own functionalities okay any questions over here and there are a lot more things in a lot more things that we can do with this outer join inner join so and you can just have a, a merge unique values drop if you want to drop uh, these things and there are merge result indicators a lot of things are there but i think uh, uh, most of these things you will do with sql you will just use uh, pandas to prepare the data but sometimes if you want these queries you should know that these features are also there okay you will have overlapping columns also okay and one more uh, function that probably you guys will study on your own is join okay join and compare these are the two things that uh, you should do on your own and it is it is there in the official documentation so what data frame join does is it will combine multiple columns of multiples okay potentially different indexes in the data frame or in the in the uh, indexes also so compare will also compare but i hope that most of the times you'll use either concat or you'll use a merge okay so these are the most important functionalities what we studied for the pandas and there is a lot to cover so i'll tell you what is there to cover so the first thing i want to show you how to do group by okay and how to do pivoting group by pivoting and how to work with time series data and uh, then uh, time series and there are how to handle categorical variables and uh, how to handle uh, missing values all of these things are again given by pandas so you can let me just uh, close the code window so that this is also visible clearly so we saw different topics these are most important of which i thought but uh, in the interest of time i said that there are more important topics which sometimes we'll take so we'll take this group by we'll take this pivoting we'll take time series categorical missing values and some other miscellaneous topics we'll take care of okay but uh, till here whatever we uh, whatever i taught you in the pandas i think more or less this is enough for uh, working on good scale problems now the next session will be on the matplotlib and uh, here we'll partially stop the we'll rather pa pause the pandas playlist and then we'll move on to matplotlib once we read once we reach to this time series once we reach to this categorical and how to handle missing values so we'll again uh, open one more folder uh, on this uh, we'll resume basically the study of pandas again that time okay but consider that whatever we uh, uh, have learned till uh, this point about pandas more than 80% of the times you will use this okay i'm i'm so sure more than 80% why because very less people of you will work with time series data if you use time series then to you will have, uh, uh you'll only use few of these things but time series we have to handle that differently and missing values also is an important topic pivoting group by this is also an important topic but i'll say uh, for the small scale projects and whatever you are uh, going to do now so 80% of these things you will handle and once we reach to eda there we'll uh, see how to deal with missing values and these things but time series i think we can push it because we have i have no plans of any time series project in my head but any time it comes we'll learn about time series things also Okay so with this I'll close the recording I'll take the questions now